Hi, welcome to the Java programming tutorial. The last tutorial we looked at a multi-dimensional array. Now there's many different array. It's a collection of data that we showed beforehand. We had a, a group of integers and rather than typing them all out, maybe we've got 200 of them, we can group them all together in, in one name and access them by the index number rather than personal by name. And then if you have to access each one individually with different names and different values, then it's so easy to make a mistake. It's it's just you know, it's like we're not good at these sort of things. You know, the um holding all that information and being precise with it and all the data. And so if we can group it all the same types into to, to one component and it's called a collection and we've got collection classes and um, that's an array it's a group of the same types all in one container and we just need to type that one name and its index number and we've got access to that individual um, integer and it's the same with strings and objects now the sort of the sort of um, arrays and in Java. There's vectors, stacks, linked lists, maps, hash tables, array lists. No, there's quite a few. And so what we're going to look at today is um, array lists. This is an array list. And the difference between this and an array is an array what you do is in this one I've created one, two, three, four elements and this has to be you have to state what size an array is going to be, um, and it can't, and you can't expand. Once the, the program's been created, you can't expand on the size of that array. Um, and so, it may be that you've put in a hundred elements, and during the program, it tries to write a hundred and twenty. Well, because it's because it's over the limits that you've gave it, it's out of bounds, and it throws an error, and the program crashes. So you can't do it, so you've got to be precise in the size. Well, what what Java has is array lists, which are dynamic. And the reason why it's dy dynamic is because it can expand its size and reduce its size at will. So if you, if you thought you needed 100 elements, and during the life of the program it ended up it wanted 120, 100, 200, a dynamic one will expand to that. Um, as you, as the program's going along, it won't crash, it will continue, so it will meet your needs, it's dynamic. And the, diff the way you create one is different. This is how we would create an integer um, array, and with, with square brackets, we've done a multi, so it was two square brackets, and if we wanted three and, um, arrays to this one, it would be three and four and etc., so it's multi-dimensional. But we'd only have a normal standard one, just one square brackets, give it a name, equals new int in square brackets again and then we would give it a, the number of arrays or we would assign the elements um, initialize it straight away well the the array um, list um, is different um, this here is a constructor of it but you start off with saying it's a list a list and then you've got you've got to declare what type is going to be this inside this array list the same as that you said int square brackets but the int isn't a class it's a primitive type so java has a integer um, class and that's what you put in and all classes start with a capital i so you put the whole word integer with a capital i in here if it was string you would put string if it's an object, you'd put an object inside here. You can add your objects to it uh, much easier with a linked list or a array list than you can a normal array. Then after after that, you've got the greater inside that you've got the outside of this integer. You've got the greater than and less than signs, and then you give it a name equals new again, just the same. And then the constructor of array list. Notice the difference, there's two different names here. And in between the brackets, the brackets and array list, you've got the greater than and less than sign. 
and again the data type. That's just the way it's done, integer. So what it means is that integer is going to get passed here. And so what you've done is the name is numbers. So again, it's numbers dot dot add and it's wanting to know what we're going to add but we're going to give it a raw number and just go 333 333 and so that's us added another element to it without even if this was an original array and uh, that would have been set to 5 and if we added 6 to it it would have crashed the whole program wouldn't work because you would be out of bounds and so with with the risk that doesn't happen you can add and take away whatever you want the size is dynamic the size of the ray is getting bigger as it goes wrong it's getting smaller constantly it's never the same well, it can be the same though but the new set's changing and so that's how you create an array and what i've done is i've used an enhanced for it now this is the standard for it right you initialize the counter and then you, you put a condition for true or false and then you increment well Java's got an enhanced one all you need to do is put in a data type of the array that's the integer you see it's highlighted and then give it a name to access it and then semicolon to send, separate the name of the array list and so this one's called numbers that's what we called it so you put numbers in there and to see all these elements, all you need to do is system print out and put in the integer that you declared. And that this integer is going to access them. It's like it's like in here you've done square brackets y. These two integers were used to access it. Well, this integer is going to be used to access it without putting this part in. All we've done is just put the integer, the index number in here, and it's going to print out every single one of these elements. That's an enhanced for it. You can see um, it starts at 166, 333, 5397, six different elements. And you can see, you'll see that, that's what we put into it. And we can mix them up, we can change that to 19919, and you'll see. and we're going to add another element to it you wouldn't be able to do this with an array without changing without changing the, the original um, array to take to take an extra element but we can do it here so you can see this two um nine and the seven one two three four five six seven and it's two of these because we put two in and we'll put one in front of that just to make it different and there you go the one in front of it so that's an array list now this is very useful because this is an integer but this could easily be an object a class and you've seen when we've done an array of class, um, objects how we had to initialize each element with another object of the array which is expensive so that it would assign value, it would not be null, so it would have the values of that class. Um, and so it was quite complicated, and um, if, if someone didn't come across it before, they would be confused with the, the exception that was thrown and how to overcome it. And so this way that you don't, it won't throw an exception. So I could have a class in here for like, say a bullet, and I could like f have a key and fire a bullet, hitting the, the key number and it will start it will fire constantly um, and because it's an array list um, it doesn't matter how many times I fire the bullet as long as I press that key a bullet will be fired if I press it a million times that array list will become the size of a million now if I just press it ten times that array list will just become the size of ten and you'll see a bullet flying across the screen or up or down the screen or across the screen and and hitting objects and things exploding and all the rest of it and so this is one of the, the uses that you can use an array list for because it's dynamic and so so that's that's enhanced for it and that's array lists 
So again, thank you for your time.